Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are sharing with you how we tried living on an Amtrak train. We came up with this idea a few years ago and we were pretty excited to try it out because we didn't know if it could be done living on a train. It sounded kind of crazy. Sounded like something we would be interested in trying, and so we put together an itinerary that we're going to share with you here, and we jumped on and tried living on an Amtrak train for a month uh, just to see if we could do it, and it was a ton of fun. It was an amazing experience. There were a lot of unintended consequences, I would say, mm -hmm. both good and bad, uh, so we're going to go over those and give you the details of all how this went down. Yeah, and, you know, we've, we've done this a couple different ways before uh you know living on various things but this one is definitely one that we had thought a lot about was doing the trains because we love tra traveling on trains as you guys know um and we just really wanted to try to cover as much ground as we could as well of the u.s um, we've done all of these trains before and so we kind of put this trip together um, just to really see if we could live on the train for a month and if we would enjoy living on the train for a month. <laughs> yeah, we've tried living on a cruise ship. We've tried living in a hotel. Those are pretty easy uh, to do uh, for a month. But a train, thought that's going to be a real challenge. So let's jump into what we actually did. Started out in New York City. This is going to start and end in New York City. And the rules here are every single day, of the month we have to be on a train uh, with Amtrak scheduling you can't stay on a train every 24 hours of the day because you do have to get off at some point uh, but you do have to get on another train the very next day and keep on moving so that's what we did uh, which wasn't really that hard considering my hotel prices were in the United States right now uh, so we we started out in New York City jumped on one of our old favorites the Lakeshore Limited to Chicago Yes, and this is a good combo. We do take this ride a lot. We've done the Lakeshore Limited multiple times um, because we find ourselves in New York often, and of course we find ourselves in Chicago very often. Our son lives there, so we stop there to visit him often whenever we're around. And uh, Chicago's always a great place to kind of hang out. Um, we love Chicago not only because our son lives there and we can hang out with him, but we also love the food scene in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. So after Chicago, we jumped on, of course, the California Zephyr all the way out to Emeryville. This is two nights on the train. This was still, you know, just the beginning of the trip and we were still feeling pretty good, I think, by the time we got to Emeryville, uh, which was good. That was... One of the most scenic, uh, if, if you don't know, that's the most scenic route on Amtrak. So we were happy to get that one in. No delays, really. No no problems. We got to see everything. We have broken down on that one before, and it has been a bit of a mess. Uh, but we, we got through that one perfectly. Then from Emeryville, we headed south on the Coast Starlight. Probably our third favorite route right there, which is seeing the Pacific Ocean. Yes. Oh, it's such a beautiful ride. Love taking that uh, uh, ride down on the Coast Starlight, especially on that section because that's where all the views are. <laughs> that is. That, that's kind of why we did it. We didn't want to go north from Memberville. Not as good of views. And then we got to Los Angeles. That's where our daughter lives. So that was kind of the, the ulterior motive of doing this trip this way is we were kind of going around and seeing our kids uh, by train. And people kind of asked, well, you don't get to see your kids that often. Yeah, we do. We we, we mixed in, but these were quick visits because we were only there for one night. So uh, that was, then we had to get back on the train. So then we were going to be heading from Los Angeles back to Chicago because Chicago is the hub. You're going to end up in Chicago a lot if you're doing this. Uh, we took the Southwest Chief to do that. Yeah, those cross-country rides from east to west usually uh well, they all go through Chicago, so it is uh, a really good hub for us anyways. Yeah, so then this is our second time in Chicago now, so we're, <laughs> we're back there, Southwest Chief. We met a lot of subscribers on this train, and that was pretty cool. We also met some other people on this Southwest Chief ride that were 
kind of doing two and three train rides in a row also. So we got a great chance to talk with them and kind of get their impressions. We'll share with that with you a little bit later about what they thought of this whole thing too. Uh, so after getting to Chicago, one more night there, and then straight on to the Empire Builder, which is probably our second favorite train. It is. We love the Empire Builder. There's so many cool things uh, along that ride. The views are gorgeous um, as you travel from east to west. Well, from west to east also, but we were traveling from east to west. Um, and we really just enjoy that ride on the Empire Builder. It's secretly one of our favorites. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, then when we got to Seattle, we, we threw a little bit of a curveball because we did something that we'd always wanted to do still maintaining the riding a train every day, which got really tough here because there are only so many cross-country Amtrak routes and most of them are only one or two nights. So we weren't gonna be able to fill up the whole month. So what we did to get around that was we flew to Alaska from Seattle real quick, got in, went to the airport, flew to Alaska. Now we don't recommend doing that because if your train is late, that's a problem. So we usually stay the night then fly, but that wouldn't let us get on a train. So we flew to Alaska and then the very next day we got on uh, the Alaska train system. We rode two trains there two days in a row. Uh, and the Denali Star was probably our favorite. It was, uh, obviously by the name, it takes you through the national park and the views on the Denali Star were absolutely stunning. Yeah, all the Alaska trains are amazing. We had never done that before. Uh, but this was a super quick trip because we were just going boom, 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 boom. And we ended up in Anchorage on the Denali Star. So this trip, it was kind of amazing because it took us all the way from Anchorage all the way down to Miami. Uh, and the only way you can get up to the Alaska one is just to fly there. So we had to fly back from there. But we basically got into Anchorage really late at night and our flight back to the, the lower 48 uh, was at midnight. So it was a red eye back <laughs> because we were getting on a train the very next day. Uh, so, or that day actually, because the flight was that same day. So I uh, flew back to LA and then we did the Sunset Limited from Los Angeles to New Orleans. Yes, and the Sunset Limited is always a fun ride. Um, I think it's always super fun to ride through the desert. Um, and this particular ride takes you along the U.S.-Mexico border, which is also interesting. So a lot of really cool things to see on this one, too. All right, next up, New Orleans. To You only have a couple choices from New Orleans. We don't want to go back where we started, and we didn't want to go uh, up through Atlanta yet. So we went back to Chicago, city of New Orleans, which is an unheralded train but it was a good choice and that train is pretty much always on time which is one of the rare ones mm -hmm. so we were happy to do that one that was our <laughs> third stopover in chicago though and then chicago to washington dc on the capital limited uh then the silver meteor to miami and then the silver star from miami all the way back up to new york completing the circuit <laughs> in a month every single day on a train what did you think um actually as we're recounting it i'm getting tired all over again. yeah <laughs> but don't start with the what, what we didn't like we're gonna start with the what we love and then we're gonna talk about what we didn't like so right what did you love about the experience what i did love about the experience uh was i did love getting to see so much of the country. I mean, we covered a lot of the U.S. on this 30-day adventure. It was so much fun. Uh, we met a ton of different staff. Um, some were repeated from other rides that we had, and they remembered us, so that was really cool. We met a lot of uh, subscribers, made new friends. Um, I, we there were a lot of pluses. Yeah. Uh, I also love that we had plenty of time to relax throughout mm. this whole process. It if you're on a train for that long, like you, you will get through your reading list, your show <laughs> list, your everything you wanted to do list. Uh, you have tons of time uh, to do that. And then another thing that I loved was we got to try all kinds of different Amtrak sleeper classes. So whether it was a Viewliner, Viewliner 1, Viewliner 2, Superliner 1, Superliner 2. You know, there's very subtle differences between the Superliners, but it was kind of nice to do them both and just... We, were on, we did these all in sleeper class. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that. 
So that was a lot of sleeper trains. And normally if you just like book an Amtrak sleeper train, you're just going to get whatever they give you. And maybe you wanted a different style of room or class of room. And so we, we were able to get all different things. We were able to try a bedroom, roomettes, uh, all that stuff. So that was pretty cool. And then the other thing I loved was that it was all-inclusive. It is really nice to have your transportation, your housing, and your food all taken care of. And not just that, uh, you know, you've also got staff, too, that helps take care of you as well, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, once we had all the tickets booked, we didn't really have to make any decisions the whole <laughs> month. Like, there was, the only decision was what to eat <laughs> at dinner and what time to go to dinner and if we wanted to eat dinner in our room or in the dining room. So <laughs> Not too many hard not, decisions there. That's not a hard decision <laughs> month, no. Uh, so we did love that. It was cool. We met so many people, uh, a lot of subscribers too. Uh, so it was really cool to meet everybody on that trip. But there were some downsides and they were pretty, pretty big <laughs> for this. So I think the first thing was that the food started to get pretty repetitive because on Amtrak, it's one menu uh, and it's the same menu every day, which is fine for two or even three nights. But when we did this, it was like, once you get out to the West Coast, it's that same menu. Now on the East Coast, you're gonna get a little different menu with flexible, but uh, you know, I had that flat iron <laughs> steak so many nights in a row, I was like, I can't eat steak again. It's, I was like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. It just, I mean, and and I change what I eat. You you ate mostly the same thing steak at dinners, chicken. but I tend to, you know, change my options on what I'm eating. And even then, I was like, I can't do it. I can't choose the same one of the same three things again. <laughs> it was a even the breakfast. It was as nice as the breakfast is. You know, that got old, and the same thing with lunches, like how many more, you know, sandwiches and burgers can I eat, and it, it did get repetitive. As a matter of fact, it got so repetitive, we were actually wishing for flexible dining. Yeah, we were happy when we got back to the East Coast, because we were like, well, it's not as good a food, but it's different food. So that was kind of interesting, because I didn't think it would get that repetitive, but it really did, as opposed to like when you're on... Uh, the Canadian or something like that, they, they change the meals every day on the same train. So that makes it a little bit easier to do. So yeah, that did get repetitive. Uh, second thing that we didn't like at all was it's very, very, very hard to move enough if you're on these trains. So I know I ended up gaining like 10 pounds through this month because it uh, it just, you can't. You can't move. You can't get more than a thousand <laughs> steps a day. You can't do any exercise. <laughs> and it didn't feel super healthy after that month. Mm -mm. No. As a matter of fact, it became a joke. And one of our room attendants was, was you know, gave us a challenge. It was like, you need to try to, before lunch, you need to try to get another thousand steps. And we're just walking out in the hallway back and forth. It's like, you can only do that so many times. And then in the fresh air breaks... You know, they're usually not very long for the most part on most of these trains. So you don't really have, so we would get, go out and like quickly just run up and down as quickly as we could to try to get some steps. It was really hard to get steps um, while we were on the trains. It, You just felt very uh, lethargic, really, yeah. by the time you got off, right? You just felt like, bleh. <laughs> About 20 days in, I was like, this is enough. Mm -hmm. I could I could get off now. <laughs> uh, so the other thing we didn't like is it, it was expensive. You know, it's not cheapest. We've done this, uh, our, like I said, in a hotel. We've done it on a cruise ship, done it on the train. Train is by far the most expensive way to do this. And so that was something that's not great. So how much did it cost? In all, we took 12 trains, and they were all sleeper cars except for the Alaska trains but those were still expensive uh, even though they're not sleepers and four of them we booked with points so that left eight trains that we paid for they averaged about $700 for the two of us each so a total of about $5,600 we spent on trains and that was most of our most of everything because it included 
pretty much all of our food too, mm -hmm. and transportation. So yeah, and housing. Uh, and housing. <laughs> we did have to throw in a few, you know, nights in hotels, too. On top of that, but that was the the bulk of the cost was fifty six hundred dollars. We did earn a lot of points for that, which was good, uh, but it's still pretty expensive. You know, there are people that spend more than that vacationing in the U.S., but it was it was pretty high. Uh, would we do it again? That's the big question. <laughs> I think we've answered that, and the the answer to it is no. No. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't do this many in a row, um, especially being on one every single day without a break in between. So, like, did we learn our lesson? Yes, but no. Sort of. <laughs> because uh, we do have, um, you know, some trips booked coming up, and we do have, you know, several train trips booked, but this time around... We're going to stay a few nights in each of the cities to have some fun in those. Yeah, we're going to try to stay more like four <laughs> nights uh, in every city because we now are using the IHG uh, points and IHG credit card. And you get a better deal if you stay four nights. So we're going to stay four nights in between each city to get a better deal because you get one night free if you do it that way. So <laughs> that's the new plan for the 2024 train travel is we're going to get to Seattle and we're going to stay there for four nights before we move on to Los Angeles. Instead of rushing out each time. Yeah. Uh, so we did, like we said, meet quite a few other people on the train who were doing a similar thing. Some of them had been gifted uh, around the U.S. train trip from their company as their retirement gift. And so... That was pretty cool, and their their reactions were, we got to about, because some of them, we were on the same trains with them, we got to about day 10, they were on about that day too, and like, yeah, the food is starting to get repetitive for us too. Yeah, same, same complaint, really, uh, you know, really the same types of things that started to feel like, oh, okay, I feel like I can't move, because I feel like I've just been sitting here for a long time plus you know having the limited choices of the food and those types of things really did start to catch up with you after a few days yeah. after a couple weeks really so we do have a cruise channel where we tried this uh on a cruise line that went surprisingly well uh also trying it in a hotel went pretty well that that's to be expected i would think <laughs> but uh we have a, a channel we'll link those in the description below if you want to check those out but this train one was kind of the big thing, and if we could do it or not, we did achieve it, but I'm not sure it was worth achieving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we had wanted to do the cruise one as well because we had, you know, heard oh, about people, you know, retiring on a cruise ship, and we thought, you know, let's give it a go, um, and it actually... Uh, the pricing difference, this one was definitely much more expensive. The, yeah. the train for 30 days, we actually paid less on the cruises for more days. I think it was like 45 days on the cruises. Um, so that was pretty interesting, too. Uh, same type of idea, too, on the cruise ship. You know, you have your transportation, your housing, and your food, plus entertainment as well, because then you're visiting different places, yeah. too. And we were able to book those back to back to back to back, so... That did work out well. So uh, let us know what you think you would do if you if you would try this or if we have warned you off of it well enough uh, <laughs> from, from doing something as crazy as this in the comments below. Yeah, or maybe how many train trips you would do in a row without a break. But hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Let us know down uh, in the comments what you think. If you have not subscribed, please do so now. If you enjoyed this, if you'd like to see more like this, give us a like and we'll see you next time.